I think it was in the it was in the '60s and '70s uh, that we came up with Indian control of Indian education. And so these political organizations then just became an extension of my office, per se. They were next to my office. At the time, the federal government put out a white paper which was really terminating the status of indigenous people completely. Now, here's a program where an American company is going to come up uh, paid for by Indian Affairs to come and educate the people to be factory workers, like, give me a break. So I saw uh, this great opportunity of, of, of then getting a lot of people mobilized. Now the Indian Education Center, in talking to the elders, was taking thousands of years of knowledge of people, First Nations people that have lived off this land, understand the rhythms of the land, and know everything about every plant and every nook and every cranny. We would uh, record and make uh, those uh, uh, that knowledge available to everyone. I was talking to the elders and they said, well, we want to have you understand where we're coming from in our education. Um, and so they all got in a circle and they were, they were talking, you know, Anishinaabe, whether it was Cree or Blackfoot or whatever, they were all talking their languages. And I was sitting there trying to understand where they were coming from. And they said, don't, don't worry, don't worry, it'll come to you. Really? Yeah. In the middle of the night, I had this dream. I had this dream that was so powerful and had so much imagery. And I woke up in the middle of the night and I thought, I have to write it down because I'll forget it. I'll forget this very powerful dream. And the whole message and everything was there. The words were there. The symbolism was there. Most of it I didn't understand. So then I go back to the elders and they're all in a circle and they look at me and say, so, did you get it? And, you know, I'm quite astounded, yeah. Oh, well then, tell us. So then I, I read the whole concept. I'll have to get it for you, but you know, standing on the land and feeling the roots that reach out from our feet, you know. And, and I remember, and I was saying, and feeling the winds, and I could sense my headdress flapping in the winds, because this was a totally visual thing that was going on in my head. It was like a video with all the words and all the script. So I was there, and then I said, and I would feel the winds. And I was just wondering, what am I, where am I feeling the winds? And one of the elders says, across your brow. I said, yeah, across my brow. And they sat there and said, yeah, that's the vision. And I, I was astounded because, in a sense, they were conveying to me the vision in every detail. And and me not fully understanding, they were sort of, you know, correcting me on some of the words so that I would understand what that vision meant. So then I, I took it and I made models of the image that I got from this vision that they gave me. And like it didn't compute for me because I'm very rational. I mean, my mother is German, you know, very rational. My father's First Nations, yeah, okay. Uh, so all the chiefs and everybody came to Alberta and we presented it to Chrétien and Trudeau, the same thing. Well, it was so powerful that they, uh, you know, the vision was so there and, and they could see it. And I remember uh, Trudeau saying, uh, 
you know, that would be a place that I would bring my children in the future to. One uh, minister from Quebec says, and we call them les sauvages, like, you know, <laughs> like because their vision uh, of education was much more powerful and much more meaningful. So then out of that, uh, federal policy changed for Indian control of Indian education. that's just going to touch your neck and I'm not sure how you feel about spiders but it's just crawling on your shirt. Where right. would there? There he is. Whoop. Just a little guy. A little guy.